Here we're going to do crop. Here we're going to review operations with radicals. A radical is a mathematical symbol that represents the root of a number or an algebraic expression. That includes a square root, a cube root, or maybe a fourth root, fifth root, sixth root, etc. So when we're looking at a radical, the root is something to recognize first if we're dealing with a square root or a cube root. In that crease of the radical is the index. A square root doesn't have a number in the index. It's implied that there's a two there because it's recognized as a universal square root symbol. A cube root has a little three, a fourth root would have a little four, whatever the radical root index is. Inside of the radical is called the radicand. And that's what we're gonna start simplifying. So when we see something like the square root of 63, we want to simplify that radical down as much as possible. This is one method, and it's typically the method that textbooks teach. And we want to try to find a perfect square that divides evenly into that radical. So I could rewrite the square root of 63 as the square root of nine times the square root of seven. Now you would need to know your multiplication facts and know that 63 is nine times seven. But it's nice because we can write the square root of nine as just three. So that becomes three square roots of seven. If we could find a perfect square that divides evenly into 40, we could rewrite this as the square root of four times the square root of 10. The square root of four is nice because it's a perfect square. So that becomes two square roots of 10. The square root of 10 will not break down further because it doesn't have another perfect square that divides into it. When we talk about perfect squares, we wanna just review like two squared is four, three squared is nine, four squared is 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, and so on. As you are dividing, you're looking to see 40 could have been divided by four. It cannot be divided by nine or 16 or 25. So the biggest perfect square that divided evenly into 40 was four. With 63, the biggest perfect square was nine. And that's one method of simplifying your radical. Your other method of simplifying a radical has been called the factor tree method. In this, I'm gonna find factors of 128. Maybe I don't know what they are automatically, and that's okay because there are a lot of different ways that you could factor 128. Something I might notice is that it's an even number, so two automatically divides into that. And I can use my calculator to, to do 128 divided by two and give me 64. If I wanna keep breaking down 64, that's fine. That's two times 32. Maybe you recognize that was eight times eight. It doesn't matter how you factor it. It just knows that I broke it down. I know 32 might be four times eight. And four is two times two. Eight is two times four. Four is two times two. Every time I break down a number further, I've been marking it out, and that's just helpful in organizing my work because now I'm gonna look for my perfect square pairs. So there's a pair of twos, another pair of twos, here's a third pair of twos, there's a single two left over. For this method, the pairs are gonna go outside of the radicals. So there's a two, another pair of twos, another pair of twos, and then the square root is whatever's left over. So there's a two left over that's gonna go inside. So as you can see, this two on the outside came from this first pair. Then we had a second pair of twos and a third pair of twos. Two times two times two is eight. 
So this simplifies down to 8 square roots of 2. At the very end of this video, I'll explain why does this second method work. Let's continue on to the square root of 72. As we're doing the square root of 72, maybe I recognize that it's 9 times 8. I can continue to break down 9 into 3 times 3. That created a pair right there. 8 is 2 times 4. And 4 is 2 times 2. So we created another pair. There's a pair of 3's and a pair of 2's, but there is still a 2 left over. So outside of the radical, there's going to be a 3. There's going to be a 2 because of our pairs. Inside the radical, the leftovers are the 2. So this would simplify down. 3 times 2 is 6, so 6 square roots of 2. You can use whichever method works best for you, but you do want to make sure that you have simplified furthest. So if anything in the radical still can break down into a perfect square, then you would want to keep simplifying that radical. Whenever we're adding and subtracting radicals, we need to have the same radicand. Think of this like variables. If you had something like 5x plus 12y plus 4x, you would be able to combine like terms because the 4x and 5x both are in terms of x's and makes that 9x, but the 12y cannot combine with the 9x, so it's just 9x plus 12y. The same logic is going to be applied here. As we're looking at the radicands, we have a square root of 3. There's another square root of 3 over here, but the middle term is a square root of 7. So I'm going to combine the square root of 3's. I have negative 2 of them and 4 of them. So negative 2 plus 4 is positive 2 square roots of 3. Then I have 3 square roots of 7 left over. So this combines simplest to 2 square roots of 3 plus 3 square roots of 7. I cannot combine that further because we have different radicands. If I look at this next example, negative 3 square root to 18 plus, well, minus 4 square root to 2 and 3 square root to 8. They look like they are all different radicands. And they are different radicands, but maybe we can simplify them down a little bit further. The square root of 18 is the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. The square root of 9 is nicely 3 square roots of 2. Sorry, the square root of 9 is 3, and square root of 2 was left over, so it becomes 3 square root of 2. There was still this negative 3 in front. That was negative 3 times the square root of 18, so that's negative 3 times 3 square roots of 2, which makes negative 9 square roots of 2. Then I have minus 4 square roots of 2. I can see those have the same radicand. And we're going to break down the square root of 8 into the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. The square root of 4 is nice. It is just 2. So the square root of 8 simplified down to 2 square roots of 2. But we still had a 3 in front. It was 3 times the square root of 8. So it's 3 times 2 square roots of 2 which gives us plus 6 square roots of 2. If we combine like terms, now they all are square roots of 2's. So I have negative 9 square roots of 2 plus a negative 4 square roots of 2, which is negative 13 square roots of 2. And we're going to add 6 square roots of 2, so negative 7 square roots of 2. Next, we're going to multiply radicals. Whenever you're multiplying, you're going to multiply the outsides of the radicals together and then the insides of the radicals together.
So if I do the outsides, I have 3 times negative 4, so negative 12. And then the square root of 60. I'm going to use method 2 for this one. And I'll do the factor tree and say, I know that's 6 times 10. 60 is 6 times 10. 6 is 3 times 2, so I can use the 6. 10 is 2 times 5, and we use the 10. Here I see a pair of 2's, so that becomes a 2 on the outside. But the inside is what's left over, which is a 3 and a 5. So that square root of 60 is just 2 square roots of 15. There still is the negative 12 times the square root of 60. So that's negative 12 times 2 square roots of 15 which combines to be negative 24 square roots of 15. In this next example, we're going to distribute. We have multiplication across addition. So the square root of 3 times the square root of 5, and then the square root of 3 times the square root of 6. If we're multiplying square root of 3 times square root of 5, we multiply the insides, which is square root of 15. Plus, then we do the square root of 3 times the square root of 6 to get the square root of 18. If those simplify down further, we need to simplify them. The square root of 18 can be written as the square root of 2, square root of 2 times the square root of 9, which is just 3 square roots of 2. So as a finished simplified version, we'd have the square root of 15 plus 3 square roots of 2. Or if you want to write that as 3 square roots of 2 plus the square root of 15, that's the exact same thing because addition is commutative. Lastly, I said I was going to explain why does method 2 work. And some people find this easier because they can use their calculator to find the factor tree. Some people find it takes longer, whichever way works best for you. If I have a very large number, I can use the factor tree and maybe I know that 2 goes into 252. So I can use my calculator and say what is 252 divided by 2? we get 126. I might not know what goes into 126, but I can see it's even, so 2 definitely goes into it. It's 2 times 63. That's already made a pair of 2's. But I used the 126, so I'm going to mark it out. 63 is 9 times 7. 9 is 3 times 3. That makes a pair of threes. Seven doesn't break down further. What we would end up with is two times three times the square root of seven, which is six square roots of seven. The reason why this works is because we're doing a prime factorization of 252. We're saying 252 could be written as 2 squared times 3 squared times 7. The square root of 2 squared is just 2. The square root of 3 squared is just 3. But the square root of 7 is the square root of 7. So that's how we got the pairs outside and the leftover state inside the radical. If we did 336, maybe we recognize that 3 goes into it and do 336 divided by 3 to get 112. If I'm not sure what goes into that, but it's even, so maybe 2, and it's 2 times 56. 56 is 8 times 7. And we just break this down as much as we can. So 8 times 7 makes this 2 times 4. 4 is 2 times 2. 
but the seven never broke down further. The pairs that I see is a pair of twos and another pair of twos. So this would simplify to two times two times the square root of three times seven. So four square roots of 21. If I had used the prime factorization of this, I'm gonna move this to the next slide. If we use that prime factorization, this would have been the square root of 2 squared times 2 squared times 3 times 7. The square root of 2 squared is 2. The square root of 2 squared is 2. The square root of 3 is the square root of 3. And the square root of 7 is the square root of 7. That's how we got 4 square root to 21. Use whichever method makes most sense to you. You can often check this on your calculator as well to make sure that you're getting the same value.